See, when you're speaking with someone and new lookers that enter the, the, room, the home, interrupt the conversation to acknowledge the new guest by saying, hello and welcome, the seller would like, to re like a record of everyone. See, because you're engaging and treating everybody equally, right? You should always just say, you know what, they're at an open house. They don't expect the customer that's walking through, doesn't expect a full tour. They don't. You need to register and capture as much information and enough, enough real information as possible and let people walk through the open house. We'll cover later in this in this program, uh, open houses by appointment, but let's continue as if they were just freely walking into an open house, and then we'll cover uh, some more uh, relevant topics when it comes to by appointment only, which, by the way, I like, too. There is, there is a strategy. See, once lookers tour the home, your goal is to what? Answer any and all of their questions, reveal information. Identify exactly where they are in the buying process. You should label in your head, okay, where are they at? How are we going to do that? Remember, this program has been pretty consistent. Forward, family, occupation, recreation, dream. Because once you have that conversation, usually the customer or client will pull the walls down, pull the walls down. You know, you, they should be able to share where they're at in the process. Right, and then, of course, you're going to close and or follow up accordingly. Take appropriate action. The bottom line is you must engage. Hello, hello. You must engage. You must engage. And I know if you're on a team, oh, I'm not going to engage. You know, that's the responsibility. That's why I'm, I'm on the team. I'm not going to engage. Guys, engage. Is that why you join the team for opportunities? And if you're not on a team, engage. Get out there. Talk to people. So you want to provide relevant information. So part of the role is to provide the looker with information. Why do they come? Open house. They're curious. They don't want sales pressure. Give them information. Stop trying to be the gatekeeper. This is not real estate of the 1990s. The gatekeeper is over, right? So everyone has access to information. Okay? Our role is typically to interpret the information that's there. Legally interpret, right? You're not a lawyer. You're not an appraiser. Okay? Interpret the information. So when answering looker questions, always follow your answer with a question, right? This keeps you in control and the looker engaged. Hi, Mike, I'm curious, uh, why did they price it like this? Okay, well, uh, why do you ask? Oh, I'm just curious because I'm thinking about selling my house. Burp, 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 burp. Hello? That's because I asked a question. Let's roll that back. Why did they price this like this, Mike? So many agents go, they get defensive. Well, what do you mean? It's price excellent. All you do is seek to understand. Seek to understand. Well, can I ask you why you, uh, you, you asked that question? Oh, I was just curious. Uh, you know, I was thinking about maybe selling my place or, or uh, you know, I've been looking to buy. Seek to understand. Be engaged. So once they've toured the home, you know, of course you're gonna do, well, here comes the basics. What do you think about the house? Oh, it's nice. How much are they asking? Now you know they know how much they're asking, right? But sometimes if they came over yard sign, you know, one of those markers that were in the street, they really truly might not know how much they're asking. Okay. Guys, this one, uh, remember this is uh, branded by, um, you know, Remax. Uh, I'm gonna say, so they, the looker may ask you what school district it is. So uh, just, this is a fine line, uh, especially you know, uh, in, in New York. Uh, when it comes to this question, I usually recommend, uh, there's a couple of websites that we have on our agent link page that show if someone is asking about a particular school district, my recommendation is give them um, the different websites to talk about school districts and, uh, this way you don't you stay in a compliant conversation so uh, let's move on uh, what are the property taxes so don't hide guys what are the property taxes tell them does it fit th does that fit your budget no that's a little high for us stay engaged wait for the no so keep providing the looker with information and re-engaging with questions until you hear no upon hearing no you must immediately switch roles from information giver to that of the labeler by asking the looker are you currently in the market for a new home? You're going to get a reaction, guys. 
Are you currently in the market for a new home? Sometimes people get defensive. Let me explain. So they came to an open house for no sales pressure. So when you ask a question, are you currently in the market for a new home? If it's a seller, they're gonna get really defensive. Oh, well, I was just looking, I don't know, right? It's the same like you go into a store and you're looking at that outfit or, or those shoes and the, the salesperson walks over and says, do you need any help? Do you like those shoes? No, 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 So, but you should stay engaged. Are you currently in the market for a new home? But don't totally disengage after you've asked this question. Watch what I mean. So here we are. Here's a nice little chart that should help be helpful um, with the different question or right, the different responses, the different responses to help you get to get you information you need or allow that customer to work with you. So you're currently in the market for a new home? Yes, no, just looking. Here we go. So if it's just if it's yes, how are you going to how are you going about finding your perfect home? Ask about the experience. Ask about how it's been how how it's been going. There's a reason why you ask how it's going and watch. So first, let me talk about uh, agent, right? So if you have a process, what process are you using that will ensure that you get the home you want and want the home you get? See, this statement is an engaging conversation to help the consumer start to think about, well, do I have a process? Should I work with an agent? The power of self-discovery. Did your realtor sit down with, now this is uh, obviously, sorry, this is if they have a realtor, by the way. Did your realtor sit down with you and uncover your needs? Make sure the home fits your financial parameters and thoroughly discuss roles and expectations. And I love this question because sometimes agents, my, oh my gosh, I'm not asking the buyer that. They just wanna know the price, they want me to show more houses. And that's why you're gonna be showing 100 houses to a customer because you're, you're not asking the right questions. So they have another agent, hey, did your realtor sit down with you and uncover your needs? Make sure the home fits your parameters. Did they talk about their role, your role? See, if the answer is no, then so you see the value in using a process like this. Do you, did you sign anything? Would you be willing to go through this process with me? Now again, of course, only if the buyer's agency agreement is not signed. Today more than ever, my friends, it is easier. Zoom, 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 right? You know the song, all I wanna do is Zoom, right? So Zoom, Zoom, bad jokes. Hopefully you're engaged. Through Zoom, you can literally do this presentation while they're in their house, while you're in your car for 15 minutes to show what it's like to work with you. Before you had to have this whole process, invite them to the coffee shop. People are so open and actually a little bit more relaxed with just having a 15 minute conversation, what it's like to work with you. And hello, my friends that want to buy leads. 60 bucks to a 12, 2000 bucks a phone call, my friends. And you don't wanna have a conversation with a customer coming through your open house. Hello, hello. Now, let's go to the other side, no process. How would you like to use a proactive process? Now I know this, is, this, this language is a little bit more complex. You can go right to a proactive process. Even if you demonstrate what that proactive process looks like, that will ensure you get the home you want and go into the home you get. First, we need to meet so I can uncover your needs, verify your financial comfort zones and discuss roles and expectations. Now you can meet through Zoom, 15 minutes guys. It shouldn't be more than 15 minutes. Remember, you're not an Uber driver. You're not a, you're not a pizza delivery person. You're not an order taker at the restaurant. So the 15 minutes ultimately should be talking about your process and how to lead them to the pathway of success of buying, finding that right place. If you're gonna be just discussing five, 20 houses that they have, you, my friend, are just the artificial intelligence order taker. You must lead them. That's why they're communicating with you. That's why you have a career. You have to lead them, give them the information, make, uh, explain to them how the market's going, how single families are selling, how multifamilies are selling, uh, how long it takes to buy, sell, you're connecting them with a mortgage broker, give them information, discuss their needs, their and then talk about what it's like to work with you. 
and then set up a timeline. What's wrong with that? Oh, but Mike, they're going to give me some, some feedback. Uh, you know, never. I don't, I don't know. I'm just looking around. Well, do you remember what I told you about the conversion rate of internet leads, right? So there's, there's about 4.8 million transactions that happen in the United States, and there's there are 4.8 to 5.2 million. But there's like 10 times more lead inquiries. So as the market transitions and these lead inquiries become more and more because people are considered, they're staying in the market more and more, and more I believe that these lead inquiries or it's going to get more challenging because there's going to be a lot more people staying in market and searching longer. So you best be having a conversation and setting up some goals. Isn't that what we do in life? We try to set up some, try to set up some goals. So here we go. If they say no, I hope you're still with me. Hopefully your uh, fund is really valuable. So if they say no, they're not really in, a home, uh, in the market for a whole new home. So what brings you here today? Let's be cheesy for that. What brings you here today? I was just dancing along and I saw your house and just wanted to come see a human. Uh, have you ever considered selling your home? Your house? I like house, not home. Have you ever considered selling your house? Do you know anyone at this time who's interested in buying or selling? Thank you for coming. Have a great day. So the person that says no, they're not in the market for a house, you should ask questions. There's a lot of people that come to houses to interview agents and also size up the market. So usually what I found, the people that put their name, like Michael at MickeyMouse.com, those, my friends, typically are people that are either early in their process of buying or sellers. Think about it, if a buyer really needs help and they want that secret listing, wink, wink, right? They want that good price, good property. They're like giving their information to everybody. Like, hey, call me any time of day. I'm looking, looking for this house for like six months. Those are like the serious buyers. The ones that are just putting like, you know, Joe Blow, Mickey Mouse .com. Like These are people that they're just not ready. And they just don't want their, they don't want you to call them. Those are the ones to look out for because that's lead generation. Now, be engaging, right? So if they say, just looking, when would you like to be in your new house? And I get it, guys. You know, sometimes you're not able to have a full conversation, but in your mind, you should be thinking about this. You should be thinking about engaging questions when talking to the consumer. So when would you like to be in your new house? Maybe 2025. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe in 2030. 2030. You should have some questions, guys. And it's also your duty to ask questions. Why? Maybe the consumer really didn't know that they should have been thinking about an end date. Maybe they didn't know. And it was your, it was your job to talk to them about that end date. Right? What's important to waiting? Well, Mike, you know, it's, it's an election year. There's a lot of things going on. Now, the job, by the way, this, uh, this conversation here, we, we have other classes that you guys have attended, so you know that once you get back there, you provide them with data, right? But first, you want to find out what's important about waiting. Oh, I'm being gifted money. Uh, the economy doesn't look so good. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it with the interest rate talk. The interest rates are low, so it's a great time to buy. Most of the consumers don't even understand that. Well, let me, let me, let me give consumers more... Uh, more uh, more credit. Interest rates low. What does the consumer really care about? Their monthly. Also making a poor decision. If they bought a house for a million today and it goes down to 800, they feel duped. Stop with the interest rate conversation talk. It's important, but it shouldn't be the focal point. Find out their needs. I have found that people buy, whether the market's bad, good, left, right, interest rates high, low, medium, that's not something that's going to get buyers off the fence. They know the interest rates are low. You gotta be living under a rock to not know the interest rates are low. So stop saying the interest rates are low, for goodness sake. What you wanna talk about is about the micro markets. Hey, you know, uh, in, uh, in Bay Ridge, in, uh, in Great Kills, this is what the market looks like. Informed decision, not CNBC talk or Wall Street Journal talk. 
Not that it's above that person's head. It, it's you, you're talking about the market in which they're interested in. So provide localized data to help them after they said, well, what's important for waiting? Well, I don't know about the economy. Okay. And by the way, if the open house is empty or if it's by appointment only, you'll have a few minutes to talk right there. Okay. So would you mind if I stay in flow with you? Sure. Is your home mailing address and your phone number blank? Right. Reconfirm the information that you've got. Why? If you have a beautiful conversation, here we go, watch this. Looker walks in, Looker gives you fake information and you have the clipboard and they still said, it's Joe Schmo at, uh, at mickeymouse.com. They, they give you false information, it happens. But then after meeting you, after seeing the house, they like you, you gave them a lot of great information, but you still have mickeymouse at aol.com. What I have found after reconfirming that some people will then say, well, oh, by the way, I gave you my old email address. Oh, it's so crazy. And my old phone number. Oh, oh I can't believe I did that. Mike, take my, uh, take my, other, take my other number. All right. Take a criteria sheet. It was a pleasure meeting you. Stay engaged. Are you having these types of open houses, my friends? Are you? Because I know it took me a while to have a full open house like this. Oh, but Mike, there's tons of buyers walking around. Well, good news is right now it's by appointment only. Because when buyers are walking out, walking around went before, you know, without the appointment only uh, criteria, it should still run like this. You should let people tour and then have conversations. Let people tour, have conversations. Let people tour. Stop thinking by you telling them how great the cabinets are or how much potential it has. That's what's helping them. They're experiencing the house, they're in the house, so let them experience it.